where it'll require people like us to get involved and go, wait a second, this is what people aren't looking at. Because trust me, folks, I hate to say this, but it applies to the Avery case too. Do you know what law enforcement was saying in this? Do you know what the prosecution was saying in this? And it applies to the Avery and Dassey case as well. They're basically saying, you the people are either too stupid or too apathetic and you guys ain't gonna do nothing about it and that's essentially I mean they're demeaning your intelligence if you live there in Oklahoma City or in Manitowoc or Calumet and and, and you're looking at these two cases the the people involved that that perpetrated this they think you're idiots and they don't think that you'll ever figure it out Get on the train Before it leaves the station The truth train is coming Gonna run them down Run them down Alrighty, hello there folks This is the long awaited video I've been kind of teasing for a while And trying to put together and, and everything But this is the Daniel Holtzclaw video This this is the video where we're going to be talking about Well, we're going to be talking about the investigation In that, to that end We're going to be drawing a lot of conclusions to the Avery Dassey investigation because well because we we know how frustrated we are right with the Avery Dassey investigation we know how frustrated we are the fact that they left investigational avenues just completely unchecked they just didn't want to bother with certain things uh, or certain areas that they thought might not work out the way they wanted and by that I mean might have exonerated Avery in some way or might have created question for the case that they were trying to build. Anyways, the point is when investigational avenues are left unlooked at, you don't know what was there. Therefore, you have trouble confirming or denying a lot of the things you might be trying to prove. So to that end, that's, that, that's going to be a little bit of the case with a few of the a few things in this case DNA um, the accounts of the accusers in this case uh, many numerous things where it comes into play the act the tactics of the investigators absolutely atrocious um, this method of creating a list like they did um, and using this list to go and seek out people uh, the way they did I think is absolutely shocking I can't believe it's an accepted investigation method uh, to be able to go do that um, you're basically going and drumming up people. I mean, and, and then when you hear some of these interviews, the way they go, you realize that Rocky's actually pushing and bullying some of these women a bit to say what he wants them to say. And so that's some of the issues that happen with the, the accusers that come after the first accuser. And, and, I don't want to focus too much on those today. We'll probably reference some of them, but I don't want to focus too much on what, on the accusers that come after the first accuser, who is Janie Liggins. I want to focus on Janie Liggins and that stop itself, because that's where this investigation started. Um, so that's what we're doing today. We're going to be talking about the 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 circumstances around the, the Liggins traffic stop. We're going to be talking about, you know. How, what's the you know how much truth uh, you know we can can we honestly feel that Jenny might be telling us because we can we can actually prove two things that she said actually false uh, so we're gonna be going through these things today we're gonna be talking about how the investigators were clearly ignoring certain things clearly not going down certain investigational avenues that they should have obviously been going down if they believed Daniel was guilty of what they believed he was what they were what they're saying he did they should have been there's other evidence they should have collected they should have gone to his house and collected his dirty uniforms that he said were sitting on his bedroom floor i believe he said basically that they hadn't been washed and old dirty you know or from prior days 
he had dirty uniforms sitting in his home that they could have went and collected. Um, they could have tried to get his underwear from that day that he was wearing. They could have gone and collected these things. They did not. They chose not to go get these things. These things... Okay, can you imagine, folks? If, say... Would there be any doubt about this? If they had, say, went and collected Daniel's underwear and it hadn't been washed, and lo and behold, there's some of Daniel's semen in it. Would that... would I mean, that would then have... That would have, you know, built the prosecution's case, wouldn't it? Would have been a hell of a hell of a thing for them to have to be able to say at trial, right? Would have been very helpful to them. So why weren't they going to collect this stuff? Why? It's like I say with the Avery case. We have the same questions with Avery. Why are they ignoring these obvious avenues, right? So you guys have any, uh, Paul or Mitch, in, in terms of that and the Avery investigation and missed avenues, any thoughts as we're, as we're beginning here? Let's start Mitch with Paul. Mitch first. <laughs> oh, me go first. start with Mitch? Oh, go yeah, ahead, Mitch. Yeah, I'll say, I'll say. <laughs> yeah. Well, certainly, um, it, <clears throat> to me, it sounds like a lot, of, a lot of tunnel vision was right there. They just said it. They, they were just, just one direction and far as you know that's the way they were going to go and they, they were concerned you know the focus was uh daniel and if they were going to go to his home and they would have gotten his you know his clothing and such did a search warrant there they might have found things that would, would have exonerated him because he was you know or the target right him, from the, but the, i mean it's just yes, the fact that they exactly. didn't go get it but, but <laughs> right yeah <laughs> Which is usually, for me, every investigation that I've seen and, and, and been, you know, and, and through the court system that I work for as well, I mean, they always, you know, they're searching the homes, you know, for right. a possible other evidence or yeah, for e go either way. And this, and all they did was collect It seems like negligence, right? right? <laughs> yes. Right. It just, exactly. But it, it was just a straight tunnel vision there, you know, as well. So, you know, hard to know what happened, why they weren't following standard procedure, in my opinion. Right. All right, Paul. Well, um, I, you know, sorry, I, I, I can't help thinking that we need these detectives to go to Manitowoc and investigate uh, the sheriff's department up at Manitowoc and Calumet. Because there if they go. can secure a guilty conviction for Daniel with nothing, just imagine what <laughs> kind of what kind of spectacular success they would have up there investigating Lenk and Colburn and Weigert and Fassbender and the rest of them, you know? I mean, c come on, guys. It, 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 yeah. It's so... It, the the di dichotomy between the two investigations. There, there may know? be some merit there. There may be some merit there, you know? Hey. <laughs> they, don't, they, don't care, they don't care if Manitowoc is guilty or not, right? They're going to get them, right? Anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sorry, you know, that's a, a great uh, reference for it's, it's, it's those just, of you in the, the Old Lock community you might not have got that, but anyway, sorry, go ahead, yeah. Paul. But, it, but it's the lengths that, that you know, Calumet go to, to to help Manitowoc, you know, to help their brothers out. And yet here we go in Oklahoma, you, you've got this case where it, it's it's just so bizarre that the, the, the police are investigating their own. And, you know, fair enough, if, if they're investigating their, their own, one of their own, and they've got evidence, but the fact that they're actually going out and, and making up evidence and, and encouraging these the, the, these people to, to, to give them false testimony, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, uh, with, with with whatever inducements they're being given, which you know we you know as as we were saying off air, we, we can understand, you know, where 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 certain motivations are coming from. Yeah, but oh. but it's just uh, sure. it's it's just ridiculous, isn't yeah. it? You know, that's definitely one thing about this is like I don't I mean I have nothing against the accusers here. Uh, well, okay, tiny bit maybe, but for the most part, I feel like they are just who they are. They are, they are ladies from you know the low income part of town. You know, they've had they probably have had struggles with law enforcement and run-ins with law enforcement. You know, all kinds of you know you know for a lot you know a lot of their life, and and it's probably not pleasant for them. And you know, I mean. And so this opportunity came for them to maybe be able to to clear up some problems for themselves. And who knows, maybe even a lawsuit eventually down the line, or a civil suit down the line. And so they went for it. So it's hard for me. I, I really don't fault them for what, for, 
for for going along with the investigators is what I'm getting at. It's well, I fault the investigators for creating the situation in the first place. Mm. You know what I mean? I, I get the sense from those interviews that at first they were concerned that these investigators mm -hmm. were were coming in into they were concerned and it was only once they were given certain assurances basically if you help us with this we we you know we'll we'll help you right you know, that you know the, the end of that um Sh Sh Shardoyan Shardarian Hill interview Shardarian Hill Shardarian yeah. Hill you know when she yeah. said you yeah. know it, 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 is, is this going to help you even if it didn't really if if a bit like Brendan if it even if it didn't really happen right right you know, where she, and she yeah. actually uses the words "even if he didn't rape nobody." Yeah, those are her exact words. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. right out of her own mouth. I mean, so, um, and and like I, that's why I say, folks. I mean, when it comes to the to the accusers that come after Janie Liggins, there's there's plenty of issues there with 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 their with their stories. Now, I want to also say this. As much as I don't, I mean, I really don't blame these ladies. And, and actually, my heart goes out to a couple of them, a few of them. I think a handful of these ladies were actually victimized by an Oklahoma City police officer. I truly believe they were. And I truly believe, I truly believe those ladies deserve compensation. You see? Problem is, they're going to get that compensation right now with Daniel as the guy who did it. And the problem is, I don't believe Daniel was the guy that, that did it with those particular women. Why do I think that? Well, because their account specifically was of a black man who was shorter than Daniel, much shorter than Daniel, driving a black and white patrol vehicle, which Daniel didn't drive a black and white patrol vehicle. Daniel was one of the lucky ones, and he was driving one of the brand new take-home all-black vehicles. So the fact that there is a handful of these ladies describing an officer who is black, short, and in a black and white vehicle is a huge problem. It's more than a huge problem. Yeah. And also, it, but, also, so get, get, getting, getting back to the getting back to you know the interview. You know, imagine if those ladies had said, "No, we're not going to help you on this." I just my, can't imagine. I just can't imagine that because because these people. They don't trust law enforcement. Right. Uh -huh. They don't, you know, they have a, they have a, um, you know, and they realized that, that, that if they decided to go against what uh, Davis and Gregory were wanting them to do, it was going to be trouble for them. Or it could be. Yep. Potentially. They, they, they have the, they have the potential yeah. to cause these women a lot more trouble. So just go along with, with what they're saying. Right. And they, and, and they that, might benefit out of it, you know? And that could very well be. I mean, that's, you know, it's, that's it's, true. it's called taking up, take it, take the path of least resistance. And 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 there's some justification for that. Um, Police Chief Seedy, uh, when he was a patrol officer, did some things that I'm going to show you guys a little later on here, after we talk a little bit about the Ligon stop. But it's shocking. I mean, and this was the guy who was in charge of the department at the time. When you find out what he, you know, what he was quoted to have said. You can understand why the African American community there on the east side of Oklahoma City would have some issues with their law enforcement. I can't blame them. Not after reading those quotes, you know, from the police chief at the time. And we'll get to that in a minute. So, all right, let's move into the Ligon stop now. So, so everybody understands that what happened is on June 18th, uh, mm -hmm. Basically, in the early morning hours, I think it's 2 or 3 a.m., Daniel is getting off of work. Daniel Holtzclaw is getting off of his shift is ending. He's getting ready to head home. He's leaving the Spring Lake, uh, Oklahoma City Police Department building. And he makes a right. He basically comes, he comes out and he heads northbound on Prospect, which is basically making a right out of the Spring Lake station, heading north on Prospect. He gets about a couple blocks to, I believe... On the 18th, it was 50th Street. And and then at, at 50th and Prospect, he turns off his computer as he's on his way home. So there, there's the, that's that's one of the things that happens. And just after that, he, he moves down. He, mo he makes a left onto 50th and makes a left. And he's headed, um, which would be westbound. 
uh, toward Lincoln, I believe it is, right? And it's when he gets over there that he then sees Janie Liggins. He sees her, he's behind her, they're driving, and he sees her swerve, okay? Now, I guarantee you, <laughs> I guarantee you he was sitting there going, I just want to go home, I don't want to mess with this. I mean, at least that's my opinion anyways, that he just... He probably didn't want to mess with it, but he saw a swerve. He became concerned about this person endangering the safety of others, and so he felt compelled to, to check it out. Um, so he pulls her over, and there is about a 15-minute stop, which which judging, judging by what he did is not long. I mean, he ended up checking her vehicle, checking her purse. He found a... Uh, all kinds of pills, uh, like like just all kinds of pills in her car, and so this this stuff m made him more concerned. And so he spent some time searching her car, questioning her, and stuff because it was just a lot of pills. Even though she had them in prescription bottles and it was technically legal for her to have, he was still just concerned at the massive amount of pills that that he found. Right, so it's it's really explainable that this 15 minute stop took place because he was questioning her trying to figure out what was going on and all that sort of thing so okay so the stop takes place stop you know they 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 end up you know parting ways Mark daniel goes his way she goes her way later on she's coming back with claims that a couple hours later um instead of calling 911 they're driving around in the middle of the night finding a police car in an in a parking lot i can't tell you how bizarre this is this sounds like honestly it almost sounds like something people would do strung out on drugs like or whatever but anyways driving around in the middle of the night looking for a uh, a stray officer that they can that they can find and they actually found a couple in a parking lot um, instead of calling 911 or the police department directly so that's another interesting thing that happens but and she finds those officers and she begins to tell her story and make the claims that she made uh, that that Daniel Holtzclaw had forced her to give her to him uh, oral sex it was, that it was forcible forcible oral sodomy and and that sort of thing and so she gives her her her, her story to that officer that ended up making its way to Kim Davis the head of sex crimes uh, in Oklahoma City PD and she goes down and talks to Janie Liggins all within two or three hours of this happening when this when this supposed event took place. Okay, this is so this is all very, very soon after. It's all getting done in a very timely fashion. Okay. They do a SANE test on Janie. They don't know the results of that SANE test yet, but they did one. They collect, you know, they did the swabbing and everything and sent it to the lab. Kim Davis, um, you know, in, in, ter er, in interviews Janie Liggins, and Kim Davis is convinced with with Janie Liggins' account. She be she believes, or at least at this point, she's, she believes that something may have happened and so she's going to look into it. That's, eventually they bring Daniel Holtzclaw in to talk to Daniel. That's when we start getting the two stories. Okay, so the things you need to understand about the Janie Liggins stop, folks, are in, 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 the, in the course of this stop, Janie Liggins claimed that... Uh, she put her hands on the hood of Daniel's car while he patted her down. Um, she claims that, um, well, she had, it's very interesting. She The whole time she's very, very scared that Daniel's going to shoot her, uh, which is very strange. Um, no other accusers uh, have or are, are, are act that way um, in that term or in that sense. Um, but then she claims that she was put into the back seat or back seat on the driver's side of the patrol car while cars were driving by down a busy street and that he was blocking the doorway with his body while forcing her to give him um, oral sex and that he had put his hand on top of the roof there and was, was leaning his body to block the view of oncoming cars from seeing what was going on. Uh, and, and so these are the things that she claims. Here's the problem with that. They tested the hood. In fact, the hood was covered with all kinds of dirt and everything. If anybody had put their hands on it, they would have displaced the dirt. But beyond that, there was none of Janie's fingerprints or DNA on the hood. So that proves that part of that aspect of what she said untrue. That's this hood right here, folks. And as you can see, 
it would be pretty darn obvious if somebody had put their hands on that hood because uh, it certainly would have displaced some of that uh, dirt uh, that was on there. Um, and then you have the fact that she says that Daniel put his hand on top of the roof while he was forcing her to perform the act that she you know, is saying that he forced her to perform and that he put his hand on the roof. There's no, there's no fingerprints, DNA, or anything to support that Daniel's hand was ever on the roof right there, as she's saying. So these are two things that you can prove with Janie Liggins pretty much right off the bat that were not exactly truthful. It doesn't necessarily mean she's lying about everything, but it means I'm I'm suspect now. I'm now I'm having a little more trouble believing her when I know those two things, right? Then and they didn't know this obviously that day. The same kick comes back a little bit later, but Eventually, the same kit comes back, and there's no trace of any foreign DNA in her mouth at all. Um, and and I mean, Kim Davis is talking uh, talking all about how they got it within three hours, and if there's something there, they're gonna get it, and yada 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 yada. And she's going on and on about it because they got it so soon, um, but they found nothing, absolutely nothing. Alrighty there folks, this is uh, a printout of Daniel uh, when he was turning his computer on and off in his in his patrol car. Uh, these are from right before this happened. So you see 618 right here. This is when he ends shift at North Prospect Avenue and Spring Lake Drive. Okay, now Spring Lake Drive is where the, the station is. So you see Spring Lake Division Parking Station Drive here similar place but probably on a different side of the block but generally when he's leaving the station you can see somewhat consistent with that where he's leaving the station or leaving wherever his last thing is and he shuts it off so the, the thing i want to point out here is north prospect avenue spring lake drive is where he shut it off on 618 of 2014 that is the night he pulled janie liggins over and this is, they, like I said, the prosecution media tried to paint this as something sinister. That he was turning his computer off because he was going on the prowl, essentially, was their kind of reasoning. Um, so what I want to show you guys now is a map and show you where these places are on a map, where the, the actual, you know, stop was, and that sort of stuff, and let you guys make your own judgment about it. Okay, all right, folks, here is a map of the east side of Oklahoma City. Here, where you see the red pin, Spring Lake Division OCPD. There you go. That's where it's at, right here, okay? Now, what did that say again? What was that? What, what did it say? Uh, North Prospect Avenue, right? Right here, North Prospect Avenue, right? And what? Spring Lake Drive, right here. So that means he shut off his computer right after leaving the station it looks like okay so here's the intersection where he turns off his computer and if basically what he did was he went this way all the way up north prospect to northeast 50th and then he heads this way all the way this way then when he gets to here that's when he turns um what either left or right and soon thereafter ends up pulling over Janie Liggins but you can see how far this is away from here where he turned off his computer do you honestly believe that turning off that he turned off his computer here because he knew he was going to encounter Janie Liggins over here how would he know that so that's why I say that reasoning by the media and even the prosecution potentially is just ridiculous and stupid. There's no way he would know way over here that he was going to encounter Janie Liggins over here. Uh, so, yeah, anyway. So when it comes to the Janie Liggins case, there's literally nothing, nothing there to other than miss liggins you know accusation it, alone there's nothing there and i think that's the big problem with it and 
especially when you find out a little later the same kit comes back negative you what it, what it leads me to what I want to talk about about that is that it 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 leads to a situation where now they went seeking out other victims like they went and started looking for people that Daniel had had contact with and went out actively seeking to turn them into accusers I mean it's it's a shocking investigational technique I seriously like when I first heard about this when I listened to Amanda Knox's podcast over at Crime Stories and I heard about this investigational tactic that was used I was like you gotta be kidding me that can't be allowed that can't be right but I don't know what do you think about that Travis does it generally get allowed is it generally all right well you clearly want to uh, avoid that but um, it does happen but if you have a confirmatory bias you're gonna run into trouble and misjoin you know that's one of the big issues in this case that hasn't gotten any attention by the court chat is you know what they call the misjoinder right. of all of these other people they um, went out and sought these other people to try and essentially buttress the claim of the initial alleged victim because it's like you know that's what a witch hunt's all about you know right. finding more witches right. and you know you and get, by finding get the more, strength you're, you're reinforcing your original judgment of the original witch right so. right <laughs> and um so um i've seen that type of in investigative technique used um not necessarily with the police officer but it's used all the time it's why you track mo's and things like that but what they'll you know it, it it's done with serial rapists and serial murders all the time you get right assent, you, you know you get essential uh facts from a a case and you know they uh all, you know they tie the feet but not the hands or this or that and then you know you put that out nationwide but that's how you catch uh, these type of people uh, Paul's done uh, some of the stuff um, this is kind of what happened a little bit you know in the case involving Vic Fizel and they uh, you know caught that person and he started to confessing stuff all over the country right. um, and yeah. you know if if you're not paying particular attention to um, what these people are saying um, how this fits in um, no it can be extremely problematic and so again you know we're at this confirmatory bias and what happens if uh, you side with the victim you know I believe the victim and so all you're looking at is things that confirm and so you say well let's talk to other people that he's encountered and see what we get out of them and then you know you know where that leads you it leads you to the same place every single time um, right and as a lawyer I mean, as an attorney, Travis, let me ask you this. In this case, a list was created by one of the detectives of women that, that Daniel had, had contact with in the course of his, his job. Um, and this list was created. It targeted African-American women with, uh, with histories of uh, prostitution and drug activity. And they went and sought out these women. Now, at trial, the... Uh, they, the defense obviously found out about this list because they went back and listened to the interrogations, uh, or sorry, the interviews. And you clearly hear in numerous interviews them referring to this list. The prosecution denied that it ever existed at trial. What would you do at that point as, as a defense attorney? How, like, what would you start doing when, when, when that started happening? Oh.